but here the question is not memoizing the previous re results here the it is to memoize the function itself so memoizing the function might also be easy to a level but you need to memoize the function with varying arguments let's say there is a function called add that takes two arguments you need to cache it or memoize it there is another function multiply which takes 10 argument you need to memoize that also so it's not so Welcome back to Uncommon Geeks. Myself, Asant. I hope you all doing well. In case if you see me for the first time on the internet, I'm a content creator. I help people to clear their interview. I made a lot of beautiful series in the past, which has been appreciated by many. I'll try to link this somewhere on the screen, also in the description section. In case if you have not seen those series, please go ahead and watch the series. It will definitely help you to clear your interview. Now, coming to this video, it is super important video. Like you saw on thumbnail, I literally lost a very good package because I couldn't answer this question in the interview. There was three questions in the deciding round where one question had answered perfectly right, second question was somewhat right, and this was a third question where interviewer was expecting me to answer fully, but I couldn't answer. So whatever the number you are seeing on the thumbnail, that is just subjective. That is not the exact package they offered me. I just put that so that you click down the video. But it is, uh, but it was a very decent package that I would have got if I would have cleared this. Um, if you have answered this question right. So the purpose of me making this video is in case if this question was asked to you in a very premium company, you shouldn't lose that opportunity of clearing the interview. So I'll explain this question very much in depth, step by step. Okay. So this is the question. The question looks very easy. Correct. So given a function, you uh, given a function with a varying set of arguments, you need to cache that or you need to memoize that and you need to return the result. Very easy. So in case if you're someone who has a, who don't know what is memoization, I tried explaining memoization very much in detail in my previous video. I'll try to link that this particular video in somewhere on the uh, description also on the screen. Okay. So please watch that video because uh, I will not be explaining memoization very much in depth in this video because this will be only memoization of the function. Okay. So watch that video and come to this video so that it will be helpful for you. Now, coming to this video, uh, I'll just give a brief introduction about the memoization. In very simple words, memoization is nothing but caching the or the storing the result of the previous computation and using it for the next computation. Very simple example that I always give is factorial. Let's say you're calculating factorial of 20 and you've already calculated factorial of 19 in the previous. So you don't have to calculate 1 to 19 factorial again and then multiply that with 20. Correct. You can store the 19 factorial and just multiply 20 to that. That's the most easiest or the simplest explanation of the memoization, where you cache the computation, uh, cache the result of the previous computation and use it for the next computation. This is how the memoization works. But here the question is not memoizing the previous re results. Here the, it is to memoize the function itself. So memoizing the function might also be easy to a level, but you need to memoize the function with varying arguments. Let's say there is a function called add that takes two arguments. You need to cache it or memoize it. There is another function multiply which takes ten arguments. You need to memoize that also. So it's not super easy. Uh, if, in case if you already uh, not uh, done this in the past, so I'm gonna decode all the difficulties step by step and I explain you everything in this video. So please watch the video till the end. Definitely it will be helpful whether you apply for premium company or this will. Uh, it will invoke your thought process and uh, try to try to make it in think in a right direction. Okay. Now let's start with the coding. So let's say you have a function add. Okay. That takes two arguments. Number one, number two. All you do is very simple. You will just return number one plus number two. Okay. So let's say I log the results. Add ten comma twenty. Okay. Twice. So 30, 30, there is nothing supernatural. I know you, you already guessed the output. So uh, let's say I do it once again or one more time. So we are getting 34 times. Obviously, you got to know where I'm heading to. So first time you calculated 10, 20, what is the output? There was no necessary to compute the remaining three values. Correct. You could have just stored the result of the previous computation and returned it. Correct. So let's say you have another function called, I'm sorry. Let's say you have another function called multiply. Mul multiply that takes, let's say, three arguments. Number three, number three, and it will return multiplication of three arguments. Okay. So now, let's say you want to catch this as well. Rather, uh, calling multiply with three arguments, let's say same function multiply with triggered with same set of arguments, 10, 20, and 30. You don't have to compute the value again. Correct. So, 
earlier in my last video i had shown how you will cache the result of this add function and return the result if the arguments are matching but there is a argument so the results are matching you will return the same uh, same uh, you won't calculate it again but here the problem is you have to uh, you have to memoize the function add also and multiply also so you should write a general memoization function that will take different function and cache the function and return the results if it is already computed don't get confused okay i'll, I'll explain the thing step by step very much in detail okay to start off with to avoid confusion let's just stick to the add we have only one function called add let's learn how to memoize it so let's say i i write a function called function memoize okay obviously as what is our requirement we have to memoize a function so this function should take a function as an input correct now what we need to do here is we need to you need to store the computation of the previous um, if let's say function add 10 comma 20 is passed once second time you pass add 10 comma 20 so what you need to do is you need to store that value somewhere and you need to return correct so the easiest way to do is use the property of closure correct so what i'm doing here is i'm doing let cache and i'm storing using an object and how do i use a closure here i will return the function typical closure example basically i'll return a function correct so like we mentioned you have already passed the function to a memoize this function can take variable number of arguments correct so for that i'm just mentioning arcs it can take any number of arguments correct then the com then it is very easy if you are able to do till here then it is super easy now what we will do same like my last video we'll put if and else okay if a value a unique id or unique key that exists in the cache okay a unique key that exists in the cache then you will return the cache that particular index if not you will actually uh, com compute the result and you will return it if not what i'll do uh, all we do is we have to call the function correct so we'll call the function with this varying arguments okay and we'll store the results in the cache correct but only cache here is only catch here at the moment is how do you uniquely identify the key correct it was very easy if you are if you want to make it on the result basis let's say you are passing num, uh, number one number two ten and twenty if you are matching the arguments are same and return the result then it was easy to form a key now here you have a function and its arguments with this function and the arguments you need to form a unique key that's all the task pending now so how will i do that so i'll do in very simple way okay get unique id okay this get unique id takes a function and arguments like we already discussed what it will do let unique id i'm forming one array okay then what i'll do is uh, it's very simple unique id dot concat function i am forming i'll, I'll explain don't worry okay then i will return unique id dot join maybe join is not required return id join. okay so super easy so for example now here function is add what we are passing so function dot name will be add what is the argument that we are passing number one comma number two okay 10 comma 20 in the form of array we'll be passing so i'm concatenating all so it will become add comma 10 comma 20 okay it will be little look like this then i am joining all okay then it will become after the join how it will become add 10 comma 20 so this is the unique key that i formed now correct so this uh, what i'll do is i will call this from here okay let unique id i don't have to do it here i can do here let unique id is equals to get unique id okay you'll pass function comma arguments okay then what you'll do is cache of unique id correct then you will return don't worry if you're getting confused i'll explain all these things once again okay then you'll return cache of unique id if not cache of unique id is equals to this again you will return the cache of unique id only okay now don't worry i'll explain this once again step by step what is happening okay so this is all you already know simple add function correct now you are inside the memoize block 
okay so into into the memoir because as we have to memoir a function you are passing a function into this memoir is block then you are creating a simple local variable called cache then you form the closure why we are forming a closure because we need to have access to this cache even after the function is returned okay now we have function that takes variable number of argument that was another requirement for us correct a function that, that that takes variable number of argument has to be cached so we are taking variable number of arguments then we need a unique key in uh, to uh, form this cache object so we have a key value pair like in the last uh, last video as well to form a key what we are using we have created a function called get unique id correct so this get unique id takes a function and arguments and it will form a unique id like this and it will send it to us with no array actually and it will send it to us first let us go step by step okay let's call the get unique id get unique id with add function and 10 comma 20 okay let's see what is the output that is returned from here just for your information okay then we will actually get into the complete block so we are seeing same like at 10 comma 20 so if you are really serious about preparing the interview by now you will see one problem happening here in the calculation of this unique id can you guess what is happening in case if you are someone already noticed before i ask please mention that in comment section if not i'll explain you let's say you are passing 12 comma 13 okay 12 comma 23 it became so now this became a unique uh, unique id of the function correct what all problems here see now this is same for add 122 comma 3 a function add with 122 3 also unique id is same or a function with 1 comma 223 also it will happen the same way correct so we have to enhance it little bit by keeping some delimit delimiter between the arguments correct so i'm keeping a delimiter as pipe so now if you see so add 12 comma 13 12 comma 23 okay uh, this one i'm removing to avoid confusion okay so add 12 comma 23 is now a different key add 1 comma 223 is a different key now okay add 1 comma 223 is a different key then there is let's say 122 comma 3 is also a different key correct so why i am showing this is this is super important because if you don't keep this delimiter like i said all the three combination will be treated as one one function with our arguments like the uh, our code will not be able to differentiate between the three and it will return the memoirs result just for all of this which is unintended or wrong okay now let's go to the actual implementation now how to use this okay so i'm creating a variable called memoirs add okay then i call memoirs Uh, memoirs and i am passing the function of what add function i am passing okay now i do is very simple log see first you have to understand here so i am calling this memoirs function with the function called add okay then it is returning me another function correct so memoirs add now basically a function that can take varying number of arguments correct so memoirs add what i'll do now i'll pass 10 comma 20 okay i'll call it twice and here i'm i'm logging a value i'm sorry i should log out upper side log returned from cache okay returned from cache not from cache okay so because first time it will go into the no, not return from cache second time also it will go to return from cache i'll explain again step by step don't worry if you don't understanding okay let me run the code to just to make sure we are having the right value so not from the cache return from cache or else just to avoid confusion just not from cache and from cache okay fine it is working well now i'll again explain step by step if you not understood so far please listen to me once again and don't don't stop watching here because i'll show how to add another function also in the similar way so now we have a function called memoirs add so memoirs and you are passing the add function to this block okay so you called memoirs and you passed the function add okay so and it returned you another function so this is invocable function so now memoirs add basically holds this function okay and as you know this function takes arguments varying arguments you can pass any number of arguments that has been passed here 10 comma 20 and 10 comma 20 and how this function is executed depending on the arguments you pass first it will get the unique id so first time when you have called 10 comma 20 it formed add i'm doing a dry run now it formed a unique id add 
10 and 20 as unique id okay so how would, okay just in case if you want to know i can log that also so log log cache cache object i'm logging for your reference okay so that you will only get to know how it has been computed so basically first time the cache block was empty the entire cache block was empty so we got not from cache second time we have added a key this key and this value so now let's say you invoke the third time okay what will happen is it will just look whether this particular key exists if the key exists it will just return the value it need not to calculate again correct not from cache from cache and from cache so so simple correct now percent problem was not just this not to just cache add you can cache all the other functions correct so just before i show how to cache other function in case if you like in the content i'm making see this is not so easy to make a content like this we have to do i have to do a lot of preparation to make this content so there is nothing wrong if you like this video on the youtube so please like the video add a comment what you're feeling is it the you are you getting benefited or something can be improved please add the comment just because you like and comment youtube will get a lot of impressions to my video so more impression than i can reach to more people that will help me to reach out uh, i mean achieve my noble cause of helping people to clear their interview so please like and comment to the video then continue watching this is a humble request okay now so i will create another function now uh, multiply okay multiply multiply that takes three arguments number three okay so number one star number two star number three okay number three now same way what i'll do memo is add i'll just replace with memo is multiply okay multiply memo is multiply okay then what I'll do, just to avoid confusion, I'm commenting. I'll uncomment them. Okay. Then I'll have memoirs multiply. I'll pass 10, comma 20, comma 30. Okay. Let me run the code. See same. Multiply 10, comma 20, comma 30, which is 6,000. So only once it is not from cache, rest of the two it is from cache. Okay. So just to be sure, it is working well on both the functions. I'm showing you this. Okay. okay so it is working well on the both the functions so this is this is the most simplest memoization concept that you can apply on the functions with a varying number of arguments lot of you who are coding javascript on a day-to-day -day might not be using memoization concept i would highly advise please use this concept okay this will get you good review comments during your peer um, PA review and you also get a lot of respect because you're introducing new things into the code okay and it will also save a lot of computation let's say here it looks very simple add and multiply with uh, 10 and 20. what if we have so many different uh, very large values it will definitely Save a lot of computation now one last thing i want to mention is there are certain catch to this like this solution whatever i'm showing will not work for all the problems okay let's say you are passing some anonymous functions here instead of uh, multi functions like this if you pass anonymous function this may not behave the similar way and what if the you are passing a string argument and that contains the delimiter as pipe itself so in that case there is an ambiguity in forming the unique id correct so i mean you can enhance it in the interview depending on whatever the feedback you will get okay i've tried writing one of the most simplest uh, approach as possible okay and one more thing you might be observing whenever i'm scrolling right the my function header sticks at a place and rest i can scroll so this will help me in debugging a lot of my code easily whenever the number of lines in the function increases so how you can enable that in visual studio i've made a simple uh, 60 minute sh youtube shorts to explain that i'll link that on the screen also in the description section watch that short if you also want to achieve this particular feature okay so that's all about this video in case if you're not subscribed to uncommon geese i highly advise and also request please subscribe to uncommon geese i'll make a lot of content like this which will help you to for sure help you to clear your front-end developer interview okay thank you so much for watching if you're not subscribed like i said again please subscribe or read my medium blogs i'll link to the medium blogs in the description a lot of interview concepts like this i've discussed there and all these questions i'll be adding into my github repository you can download the it from there and practice on your own thank you so much for watching catch you in next video